Hey, what's up guys? The Catalyst 47 here, back with another video. Uh, so guys, what I want to do real quick for this video, it's going to be a, probably not too long of a video. I just want to do a, I guess like a quick aftermath slash my thoughts on the most recent ban list. So I had an actual, you know, ban list prediction video made when I made those other two profiles like two weeks ago. Um, but basically... I didn't like the way it turned out and before I actually got around to like, because I wanted to redo it, uh, you know, and then the ban list dropped. Um, but I mean, that's probably my fault, I was a little lazy, but yeah. So, ban list dropped and uh, I was, uh, I, I actually had forgotten my, uh, I'm not really good with like holding back on waiting, you know, being a, maybe if it was my job, I would actually make sure that I'm ready at any time to record. But obviously this is just a hobby and I wasn't, at the moment I wasn't like, uh, when the band list came out I didn't have my my tripod with me. Uh, I had my camera but I had forgotten about my tripod and I wasn't able to just, I didn't feel comfortable just recording with like the camera there so I didn't record like a reaction video and plus I was like, I just wanted to know already what, what, <laughs> what the band list did so I was like, oh, I'm just gonna look at it. But yeah, I wanted to give my quick thoughts on it. So of course we had the hits that happened to Aurordon, to um, what was it, to Meow Meow, and to uh, ah I can't even remember what the last part was. Uh, but I mean maybe it'll come to me. Uh, Aurordon, I definitely think it needed to get hit. Um, it, you could argue that Hockey Five Rex is also a problem, which it can be, but I don't know. Uh, Aurordon being able to generate tokens, like any card that generates tokens, is just absurd in the game like Link Cross and Aurordon and all that stuff so um I think that's fine because now Hockey Five Rex is not as um without the Aurordon Hockey Five Rex I mean it's still a good card but I feel like you can't just go into Aurordon now and you know like combo off like make all these synchros so I think it was a fair hit um and it was definitely I guess something that should hit it and then the second card being um what was it uh meow meow i do think i don't know i mean i do think prank kits were obviously very good and and with the adventure stuff it makes it so that it, it fixed a lot of the problems the deck had like being able to play through interruption and all that so i do think prank kits was too strong but i don't know i feel like hitting meow meow just kind of really mm, it really killed the deck honestly so i i honestly think just putting doodle to one probably would have been better like kept the deck playable and but nerfed it enough that it wasn't going to be like a tier one deck anymore um i think it would have dropped to like tier two but now i think it's like rogue deck <laughs> so i do think it's um it's not that it's unplayable just it's definitely a lot harder to play because you can't just like have one you can't just have one uh prank kit and you know pop off you need two plus a fusion spell card really so it's it the requirement to keep playing is like you need too many things to start playing so i definitely think the deck is definitely not in the top tier anymore um and like i said i do think that just i think maybe doodle to one would have been a better hit but it is what it is uh and then finally i remember i remembered while i was talking right now predator plan virtual and condo of course how could i forget uh that card's that card should have been banned like a long time ago honestly just doesn't matter like what your opponent like or how you interrupt your opponent if you interrupt them enough and they end on two bodies you just go into anaconda go into dpe and then you know you still have to if you use two or three cards in your hand to do all that interruption then you won't have to be dpe and and set up your own board with like two or three cards so yeah i don't know i don't think that was healthy for the game well it sucks though because i know a lot of rogue decks did benefit off of anaconda of course but um, yeah, the card's just too strong. Like, if they had, maybe if the requirements to summon it weren't as, like, broad or so generic, then it would be a better card. Like, it wouldn't have got banned, but it's just too easy to summon. So, yeah, I think Anaconda needed to get hit, and I'm glad it did. It makes it so that you can't just splash DPE into every single deck, and it, hurt, it hurts a little bit of the fusion decks as well. So, those are all for the banned cards. Pretty good hits, honestly. Uh, going to the limits, we had the, uh, uh, I guess, the Jet Synchron coming back. That's, uh, I mean, with, with the Rordon now uh, banned, I don't think Jet Synchron is that problematic anymore. 
it's a good card though and obviously it boosts um like synchro deck so that's pretty i think that's pretty cool um, but i don't think it'll be a problem anymore um we also had other cards like uh i know uh was it change of heart came back to one that's pretty i did not expect that which is pretty crazy um change of heart like i mean i, I don't know i thought it was a little weird though because mind control is at one and it has more restrictions than, uh, not, not a lot more, but it has more restrictions than Change of Heart. So, why wouldn't they just put Mind Control 2 or something? I mean, maybe they were just trying to, you know, spice things up, or maybe they're gonna, maybe they're gonna reprint Change of Heart or something sometime in the near future, and they just want to, you know, have a way to sell money. So, I don't know. I guess that's the only thing I could think of, really. Um, and also, Yada Gross is becoming the one that's, I mean, I could definitely see how the effect used to, could be super overpowered back in the day, but nowadays it's like, are you really going to waste your normal summon like on Yannick Rossi, you know, and that, going first, the card's not going to do anything, and then going second, I mean, your opponent will have a board, so how are you going to actually get to Yannick lock somebody? So, yeah, I don't think it's going to do anything, even though its effect is pretty busted, but uh, and then I know Monkey Board also came to one, which I never played during the Pepe format. And I know it's like a one card scale, which I think, I mean, it's good. But, I, but I'm still not too familiar with how all like Pendulum really works and how you can really combo stuff off with Pendulum. So I guess it's I'll just have to wait and see what happens. But I, I've heard the stories of how the card was absurd and how it was one of the, the few tier zero decks that ever existed. So yeah, I mean... We'll see. I mean, it's just that they've been slowly bringing back pendulums like Joker and uh, Double Iris, and then getting Astrograph on the last ban list. But I haven't seen like Pendulum really do anything. So maybe this is the boost they'll they'll need to actually start making their way into the competitive scene. Um, without a uh, Electromite, I guess the deck will always be kind of eh, like it just be okay. So we'll see what happens. I mean. You know, who knows? This, this could be absurdly busted, and I don't even know. <laughs> um, let's see, what else got limited? We had the, uh, the time, yeah, time seal came off as well, which uh, people say it's like one of the worst cards that was ever on the ban list to begin with. Like, well, I guess, I guess for more recent times. Like, it should have been on ban a long time ago. Um, okay, that's, that's fair enough. I mean, time seal, it's whatever. I don't really think they'll see much play or anything. Uh, Hockey Five Racks went to one as well. Uh, I think that's. I mean, I think that's a fine hit, honestly, because uh, like the base decks or I think the sad decks, those type of decks were playing. I think more than one. Um, so and Hockey Five Racks is a very good card. I know the OCG has it at one, so I think at one, I think Hockey Five Racks is fine. Uh, with especially with the Rodon being banned, so uh, you can't. You know, you can't like. You only have one chance to use the effect, really. So. Uh, that's fine. Uh, now, now the one that I thought was really weird and unnecessary was shooting Rise of Dragon. Like, no one, no one was even even in like the base or sad decks, whatever. Like, no one was playing more than one. So, I don't see the point of hitting that card to one. Um, but I guess it is what it is. Uh, and I think that was it for the limits. I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. So, see how it goes. But I think that was it for the limits. Um, Overall, a good amount of limits and taking off some cards from the ban list, I think it's pretty cool. Sucks that no Colossus or Harport, but whatever. Can't, can't win all. Uh, going to two, I know we had a... Uh... Yeah, I figured it was probably a bad idea, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, trying to do this off the top of my head. I even forgot that I, I missed uh, the Red Rose Dragon. Before I go into the semi-limits, uh, Red Rose, uh, again, a card that was being abused by the, you know, like the base decks and all that stuff. Card, I think it's fine hit it, hitting it to one. Um, yeah, because the deck was pretty strong, and then, you know, you, you, if you open Red Rose right, it's like, it's almost an FTK. But, yeah, that card was fine. Just hitting the consistency of that deck, um, well, yeah. Uh, semi-limits, of course, we had the Dynamite, that True Draco card. I faced two Draco a little bit, like maybe like two times ever. And honestly, I mean, I never played during the format and during that format, and I had like no idea how the deck worked. And I was like, I know it was partly my fault, but the deck seemed really annoying to face, honestly. 
So I don't know how I feel about them bringing back, like, slowly bringing back the true Draco stuff, like the King's Return from the last couple banlets and all that stuff. And now this card to two. Eh, but, I mean, it's not doing anything, so I guess it's not really that big of a problem. Cyber Angel Ben 10, I do think that, you know, Drytron, because Drytron was, like, honestly, before this, I think Drytron was actually a rogue deck. So, maybe with Ben 10 at 2, I think Drytron might, you know, that might be the, the boost it needs, like the consistency boost that it needs to keep playing and doing alright. So, yeah, I think Ben 10 at 2 is fine. I don't think Drytron will be like tier 1 as long as Eva stays banned. But maybe this will put Drytron like a tier 2 category, which I think is perfect for that deck. Um, 5 Formation 10, he going to 2. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess it's fine. Boosts like Zodiac and Tri Brigade. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I know Tri Brigade isn't doing that much right now. Um, people uh, people were playing that branded stuff, but now with Anaconda ban, it might not be as viable. But yeah, I guess Tri Brigade is fine. Like it's not like the deck is tier one anymore, so I, I guess it's fine for Tanky. And obviously Zodiac doesn't have Dryden, uh, Dryden so should be fine. Then we had uh, Pot of Desires, which I think is kind of weird that they just limited this card. I forgot if it was the last ban list or the one before that, but still, it's pretty recent. And then now they're semi-limiting it, so it seems like the it's, it kind of makes it seem like the limit was pointless. Uh, but this will be a boost to like Sword Soul, um, and I, I guess a few other decks like Grand Maju or something. Uh, and then we had the uh, Trickstar Light Stage. I did not again did not play during this format, so I don't really know. How, like what the deck really did but um but who knows like who knows how that will affect i mean considering the power creep that goes on in Yu Gi Oh, i'm not entirely sure if this will still be like that will be enough to make the deck you know a meta contender or something and then finally wall of revealing light i don't think that'll do anything they'll probably just put it to three next list same with light stage most likely if they don't do anything which i don't think they will and then finally for the Unlimits. Uh, Night Assailant got it rotted, so I guess it's fine. Uh, Trishula? I mean, that, that, that's, that was pretty... I did not expect that at all, like Trishula, so... Um, you know, people are talking about like looping the card, but I don't know, I feel like the fact that Trishula requires... If it required only two monsters, then I could definitely see it being a problem. But the fact that you need three monsters to summon it, like a tuner plus two or more non-tuners, I do think that makes it a little hard to loop in this day and age when people have like hand traps maybe if obviously if you're always playing against decks that don't have any hand traps or interruption then you could probably pull it off more consistently but everyone's playing like some kind of interruptions or hand traps so i think trishula to three isn't really gonna be i guess it's not good like the the requirement for using three monsters i feel like it requires too many resources to loop it efficiently or consistently so I don't think that'll be a problem. And then Mirage Stalia going to three. I mean, no one, I don't even think anyone would play three, even with three on the or being it unlimited. So, I, I most people would probably play two in my opinion. So I don't see that being a problem. Um, and not like Salamon Great's really doing anything. Then we got Hero Lives going to three. I mean, it gives heroes the consistency boost. Um, I do think that paying half your life points though is. I mean, it's a pretty big hit, like, or a pretty big uh, cost. So, like, if you can't gain, uh, gain your opponent, you're most likely gonna... You don't even need to do 8,000 damage anymore, so... Um, so I think it's a fine trade-off. Circle going to 3, like I said, Salaman Grey not really doing anything. Even with the Circle to 3, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good boost, but... I think as long as Gazelle is at 1, I don't think Salaman Grey will be that good. Uh, and then... Well, it's a fair deck, but I just think it's been power crept. And lastly, Scapegoat going to 3, it's, I mean, Circle and Scapegoat and A Hero Lives were all pretty predictable since they all went to 2 in the last list, so uh, not really surprising, and Scapegoat at 2 wasn't really doing anything, so I don't think Scapegoat at 3 will do anything either. So yeah, I think now that's it for the, the whole list. I, I mean, I like how they made a lot of changes. Now... I do think most of these hits were pretty reasonable, except for like the Shooting Riser one, I thought that was kind of pointless but they were all pretty nice changes to be honest i like the list for the most part except there's only one or two things i did not 
like about the list. One, we didn't get any kind of consistency hit to the adventure stuff, which I, I honestly think if they had, that would have been better. Like instead of killing off like prank kids with the banning of Meow Meow, I think if you had just hit the consistency of the adventure stuff and put Doodle to one, Prank kids would have been perfectly balanced. Like that would have been a very, it's a good, good deck, but not dead. <clears throat> so I think that, uh, yeah, they didn't uh, hit the consistency of the adventure stuff. So I think that's, I did not like that, but I know it's a rel it's relatively new. So I guess I can't really, I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't be surprised. So yeah, the adventure stuff, ho I'm hoping in the next ban list it gets a consistency but just because it's it's so consistent like to see either right or the enchantress like you have six cards in the deck that you can just go into the adventure package so um but yeah i that's that's the first thing i didn't like but and guys i think the last thing that i didn't like about the ban list was that um i know i would have been preemptive i know um, but I do wish that they had actually hit the Despia stuff in some way. Just because, um, the, the stuff is super strong, honestly. It was, and like, you know, it came out like two weeks ago, or so, and then the the Banlish just came out a few days ago. So I think the only meta decks right now, like Tier 1, is just Sword Soul and Despia. With Eldritch, like, being probably like at the very top, or, like what, Tier 1.5, or... Um, or at the very bottom of tier 1, honestly, just because you can put in a whole bunch of floodgates. But, um, uh, mostly Sword Soul and Despi are, like, the only two decks right now that are tier 1, in my opinion. So, I think we're just going to be seeing a lot of just those two decks, and the fact that, I mean, I know they're trying to sell stuff, but I feel like if they had just done a small hit on Despi stuff, that way you could still keep, like, the... I really, I've, I've been liking in Yu-Gi-Oh how the past couple of, actually in like the last year, year and a half, it, there's actually been a good amount of decks that are competitively viable, like multiple tier 1 decks, tier 1.5s, uh, and a lot of tier 2 decks that can compete. So I've been, I've really been liking that, but like the Despia stuff is just so powerful right now that I feel like if you're not playing any of those other decks, like either Sword Soul or or Eldritch, I guess, then basically this ban list actually made Despia stronger because you hit some of the other decks that were actually able to sort of compete with that, like the base and the sad deck and all that stuff. So I actually feel like this ban list made Despia even stronger, which I I don't really like, but what else, what, what can you do? Um, but yeah, I think that's like the, the, the biggest thing I did not like about the ban list. Like I said, I don't think you should have... Like, I, I, do, I do think that the, the hit to the Despia should have been very small, like the branded Despia stuff. Um, just to keep maybe, maybe something just to like lower the consistency a little bit. Um, that way, the, you know, other decks could still compete. But obviously, I don't think you should have, I don't, I'm not, I wasn't expecting like a hit to actually, you know, obviously make the deck tier 2 or like, or rogue or, you know, um, so... I definitely think whatever hit they were gonna, if I, or if they had done a hit, or if they had done what I wanted, I guess um, it would have just been something very small, maybe a hit to consistency, like maybe something like, um, hmm, I mean, oh well, no, I guess Brandon Fusion of one would be kind of a big hit, especially with Anaconda getting banned. Um, but maybe like some of the cards going to like two or something. Uh, a multiple, like a few of them, maybe like Oliver to two and like Branded or Branded Fusion to two or something like that. Just because those cards are so powerful, like brand cards like Branded Fusion, basically it's like Shadow Fusion as well. Sending cards from the deck is just absurdly busted. So I think that, um, yeah, I think something like that, like small consistency, like putting a few of the cards to two would have been like perfect for that deck just to it would have still been a very strong i don't think the cards at two would have really lower it would, it would still be a tier one deck but i feel like it'd be just a little bit more fair but yeah that's it basically that's my my little rant there at the end but yeah that's it for the video guys i hope you guys like this little discussion and stay tuned for another deck profile coming up soon i'm probably not gonna update ba just because 
I don't think the deck changed at all. So I don't think I made any changes to it. So and, and if I just make one change, I'm not gonna update BA just to, for one change. So uh, Dragon Link, I don't want to get the adventure stuff. Honestly, I know the adventure uh, Dragon Link deck is definitely the better version of the deck, but I'm just not a fan of like having to play. I know some of them can be like some of the more bricks. Obviously, you can make the deck more than 40 to minimize chances of seeing that, but I don't like that either. So I'm just I'm just not really liking Dragon Link the way it is right now. Like the way the best version of the deck is, I'm not liking the adventure stuff. Um, and honestly, I know that the pure Dragon Link is not as good. So Dragon Link might have to be put on the back seat for a little while. But maybe I'll do. But I might still do like instead of deck profiles, I might just do like little videos in terms of you know. How, how I would play certain hands, like with Dragon Link or with BA. I do want to do like more BA content just to, you know, BA is like one of my favorite decks and I think it'd be cool to show you guys how I like to, you know, go around using the deck that I profiled a few weeks ago or like two weeks ago. So yeah, guys, stay tuned for all that stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.